Hi, Merrick. I'd like to read you one of your favorite books, Uncle Louie's Fantastic Sea Voyage. One summer afternoon, Rusty went down to his workshop in the cellar. He hung a Do Not Disturb sign on the door, took out his microscope, and sat down to work, hoping that no one would bother him. But a half hour later, his father came knocking. Listen, Rusty, he said, how would you like to go visit Uncle Louie? Mom and I have to go away for a few days, and your uncle says you can come and stay with him. Rusty couldn't wait to go. His Uncle Louie was a scrap iron dealer, and his junkyard had the best junk in the world. Old cars and parts, broken down bicycles, clocks, tools, just about anything you could think of. The following morning, Rusty's mom and dad dropped him off at Uncle Louie's junkyard. We'll pick you up on Saturday, called his father as they drove away. Hi there, Rusty, cried Uncle Louie. Wait till you see the great old boat I found. I'm making it into a paddle steamer, and then I'm going to sail it to Africa. I've always wanted to see the wild animals there, and my friend Millstone wants to go with me. They'll never get all the way to Africa in that old boat, thought Rusty as Uncle Louie worked on the paddle steamer's steering wheel. But his uncle was very excited about the voyage, so Rusty didn't say a word. The next day, Louie took Rusty to meet his friend Millstone, who lived high on a mountaintop. Millstone had a water wheel that he and Louie were going to use on the old paddle steamer. Rusty was soon out of breath from the long climb, but Uncle Louie didn't seem to mind it at all. When they finally reached the top of the mountain, Louie pointed to an old abandoned water mill. That's Millstone's place, he said. It's not exactly modern, but Millstone seems to like it. Rusty thought the place looked haunted, and he could hear strange music coming from inside. When he peeked in the window, Rusty saw Millstone. He was playing spooky music on an old-fashioned organ, and everywhere Rusty looked, he saw spooky things a devil's mask, bottles of poison, and lots of strange books about magic and spells. Millstone is not quite like other people, whispered Uncle Louie. You see, he claims to have magic powers. Rusty was not sure he believed in Millstone's magic powers, but the old man was certainly strong. He lifted the heavy water wheel onto his back and carried it all the way down the mountain. Millstone and Uncle Louie worked on the paddle steamer every day. Rusty worked right along with them. By the end of the week, the steamer was ready, and it didn't look so bad after all. In fact, it looked very good. Still, Rusty didn't see how the old boat could ever go all the way to Africa. On Saturday, Uncle Louie was ready to set sail. He said goodbye to Rusty and told him to wait for his mom and dad in the junkyard. But Rusty did not intend to be left behind. If the paddle steamer was really going to go all the way to Africa, he wanted to be aboard. He made a scarecrow that looked like a boy and put it high on the mountaintop. Uncle Louie and Millstone would think it was Rusty, standing up there waving goodbye. Then, while no one was watching, Rusty sneaked on board. Uncle Louie and Millstone sailed once around town to see how the paddle steamer was running. Then, by the light of the moon, they sailed out of the harbor. In just a few hours, the steamer would be on the open sea. Rusty hid below the deck. The night was beautiful, and he wasn't the least bit nervous. After a while, Rusty went up to the top deck and peeked into Millstone's cabin. The old man was reading one of his strange books and waving a stick in the air. Rusty heard him mumble something about weather gods blowing up a storm. He's trying his magic powers, thought Rusty. The boy laughed to himself. Did Millstone really believe a magic storm would blow them to Africa? 
But just at that moment, a strong wind began to blow. Soon the waves were fifteen feet high. Rusty had to hang on to the rail to keep from being thrown overboard. Was this just a coincidence, or... Rusty! shouted Uncle Louie from the bridge. What in the world are you doing here? Rusty had no time to explain. Look out, he yelled. We're heading toward land. You can't leave the wheel in a storm like this. All of a sudden, the paddle steamer crashed against some rocks. Rusty and Uncle Louie climbed ashore without a scratch. As for Millstone, he was in high spirits. We've made it to Africa, he exclaimed. But we just left home an hour ago, said Rusty. That doesn't matter, Millstone replied. We're in Africa. Uncle Louie didn't say a word. The coast was full of rocks and he had some trouble climbing. Halfway up, he stumbled and dropped the lantern. Though the night was pitch black, the three friends managed to get to the top of the rocks and climb down the other side. In a little while, the moon came out, but a low fog hung all around them so they still couldn't see where they were going. All at once, Millstone spied a hut through the mist. Typical African hut, he said. We can spend the night there. Rusty didn't know what to believe now. It certainly looked like an African hut. Could they really be in Africa? Uncle Louie crawled into the hut first. He was surprised to find a zebra there. Deep down inside, he hadn't believed in Millstone's magic powers either. Well, zebras are friendly animals, said Uncle Louie. I'm sure he won't mind if we spend the night here. Early the next morning, Uncle Louie jumped to his feet. He pointed to a rhinoceros outside the hut. It's true, he shouted. We are in Africa. As soon as Rusty scrambled out, he knew exactly what had happened. They had sailed just a few miles from town and ended up in the zoo. In the dark, they had climbed the rock wall that led into the wild animals pit. Suddenly, things began to happen very fast. A zookeeper discovered them and started shouting. At the same time, the rhinoceros discovered Rusty. The rhinoceros was not in a very good mood. He chased Rusty around and around the animal pit. Fortunately, Rusty was fast enough to stay ahead of him until the keepers could bring a ladder. The head zookeeper had already called Rusty's father, who arrived in no time at all. He was absolutely furious. He shouted at Rusty. He shouted at Millstone. He shouted at Uncle Louie. Rusty tried to explain that it wasn't Uncle Louie's fault, but his father wouldn't listen. Millstone was disappointed about the trip. His magic powers had proved to be a complete failure. But Rusty and Uncle Louie didn't think the trip had been a failure. Though they didn't get all the way to Africa, the sea voyage had been exciting. And that's it, bud. I love you so much.